All right, for today's uh, lecture, we're going to be talking about weathering as a prelude to understanding sedimentary rocks. So I want you to hit it a deposit, um, look at this cliff face, and compare the composition of the rocks at the top with the ones at the bottom. This is the Lake Morena Spillway, um, was blasted out a couple decades ago, and into some beautiful granite. You know how you can tell it's granite? The pink Case bar makes it very pink. And you'll notice a couple things here. Um, you notice that it looks a little softer, looks more fractured down below. What you're looking at is a well documented soil horizon, a very vividly depicted soil horizon. Everything from here on up is essentially some form of soil. So, first thing I just always like to mention is. This works because our planet has a hydrologic cycle. We have rain coming out of the atmosphere. The rain combines with carbon dioxide. So rainfall combines with carbon dioxide, giving you carbonic acid, that thing that makes your drinks all fizzy. Hey. And also as rocks rise upward, they tend to cool. So there's are some columnar jointing from cracking. So what we have here is you have some acid coming out of all your rainfall. We have the rocks basically cracking on their own accord. Here's me for scale to show you some columnar jointing at Calvary Hill. And it's not just extrusive rocks, these intrusive rocks form under considerable pressure. So when they're brought up to the surface, this is a granite at, in the middle of Texas, Enchanted Rock, they will also crack. But what these cracks do is provide a surface for acids in the rainwater to attack the chemical bonds that hold the rock together. Now, normally you get um, normally the chemical weather, um, the chemical weathering tends to break rock off from the top, but every now and then a rock gets breaking off down below. And it's this cracking and jointing that rocks that granites undergo as they decompress on the way up to the surface that creates both these impressive granite domes and also creates everybody's favorite spot to get a cool Instagram photo. This is, of course, potato chip rock near the summit of Mount Woodson, local sort of geologic wonder. Now we're going to take a look at a little bit more about how chemical weathering takes place. So it starts on these high up slopes. Uh, so on a very freshly exposed piece of rock, water will start to attack the chemical bonds and break down the minerals into nutrients. So what you're seeing around this top ridge is a little bit of moss that can exploit some of those nutrients released as the acid strikes the uh, granite that makes up the rocks. And then further down, more and more acids broke up the rocks and are actually releasing nutrients faster. And down in this valley, you're seeing a fairly vigorous rate of soil production that's um, creating a very green landscape. But up here on the ridge, it's uh, still fairly slow. And this is actually one of the reasons we have these sort of ridges and valleys that uh, run through much of our local mountain ranges. Again, the chemical reaction here is you're taking carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, reacting with a mineral, and breaking it down. I said break it down. And so let's understand how, a little bit more how this works. We're going to revisit our Bowen's reaction series. So remember we had our mafic, ultramafic, and uh, Etc. Etc. Now we're going to uh, now we're going to look at more how these uh, break down into other rocks. So to do that, we first got to just sort of move aside here. So um, generally, more mafic rocks because they have more ions, that's much easier for water to attack them. Whereas your lower temperature rocks, the covalent bonds tend to um, not be as susceptible to acids. So what you get from the weathering process are the following three things. Rocks weathering. First thing you get for weathering is um, smaller pieces of rock. 
rock. This is going to be mechanical weathering. And then what chemical weathering gives you are the following two things. You're going to get ions. Ions such as potassium, calcium, sodium. Ever wonder where the um, sodium in our ocean comes from? It is the chemical weathering of silicate rocks. You're also going to get what we call residual minerals, sometimes referred to as secondary minerals, such as clay, clay, hematite, hematite, magnetite. Magnetite and a couple of uh, limonites. Limonite. And these weathering products are going to form the basis of your sedimentary rocks. They also form the basis for the development of soil. So what you're looking at here is a soil profile that is the product of chemical weathering of a sandstone with a bunch of cobbles in, so a conglomerate sandstone mix um, near USD in the Linda Vista neighborhood. And you're seeing this up, and so what you're seeing is that the very bottom, you can't even really see it in this one, but you can see it in some other places, unweathered rock. But what starts to happen is, as the chemicals attack the rock, they're going to loosen the more mafic minerals first, whereas the uh, many of those more felsic minerals, especially quartz and uh, biotite muscovite, often remain fairly unaffected by the weathering process, or at least they weather so much slower that you don't notice weathering affecting them. And so what you see in these cases is a solar horizon with um, solid rock, thin kind of rock with some of the ions, minerals have been transitioned to residual minerals, some have not. And then you start to get this layer where there's like stuff coming from the soil coming down into your rock layer. Then an area where stuff's been leached out by the acids, and then finally this organic layer, which is actually, by the time you get an organic rich layer, that organic rich layer is going to be supplying a lot more acids to your soil than the uh, rainwater itself, and breaking it down a lot faster. So what we see is that the formation of soil will actually increase the rate of chemical weathering in a rock. Rock can actually accelerate things, even if it looks like the soil is kind of protecting the rock surface. We also see here is that chemical weathering and mechanical weathering kind of help each other out. Mechanical weathering exposes more surface for the chemicals to attack. Chemical weathering will loosen the bonds, making it easier for mechanical weathering to pry that rock apart. In fact, some places you only can see this like rotten rock like right here this um which this stuff will literally break apart in your hands in fact let me show you a little video of this happening so what you're seeing now in this video is picture me about to hurl a piece of tumulite maybe it's the next video no it looks like i'm just yelling at everybody there we go so watch what happens this looks like a salt rock watch what happens when i throw it uh the, down the bench if you look closely, it's a little bit hard to spot. You see it um, shatters into pieces. That's because chemical weathering is loosening all those bonds and giving you a rotten rock. Mm. I'm going to wrap this up, and uh, we'll go into sediments in our next portion, and then sedimentary rocks.